So I've just updated to the, the latest um, Open Auto version. So I've got to re-image the Pi. Um, so I thought I may as well grab a video. So I'll show you how, how you set the Pi can up. So you can get the, the CAN bus communications going. I'm using a um, remote desktop to the Pi just because it's a bit nicer sort of to look at for people watching the video. Normally I'd just do it through the terminal. Um, but if you're following along it's going to be exactly the same. I'll just be using the terminal um, within Raspberry. And if you do want to do it yourself and you're on Windows, um, you can use PuTTY, which is the um, easiest program to sort of SSH into the Pi. Just to show you how how that works, um, this is PuTTY. So normally you just put your IP address in. So you can see where we've booted the Pi up. Um, plug the Ethernet cable in. It's given us the IP address down here. So you literally just put that in um, click open say yes to that and then it just gives you the login so it should be the default so username's pi and the password's raspberry um, and then you're in so what we'll be doing um, is using the terminal within Raspbian, but it's going to be pretty much the same. So, this is the terminal opened up. So the first thing you want to do is just make sure that the the Pi is up to date with the um, APT sources. So the first command, and I'll, I'll put these under the video, um, sudo apt update. And then it'll just pull all the new packages in just so you know when you're installing packages it's going to be the, the latest versions. Okay, so with that done um, you need to install the the can utils. I'm just going to copy the the command over. It's pretty much you're installing three packages can utils, libsocket can and the dev version as well. So you just type that in, you press enter and it will go through and install. So once that's done, you just need to edit your boot config. So to do that, you type in sudo. I use nano, but you can use whatever you, you sort of want to. N nano is the, the most straightforward. So sudo nano, and then it's forward slash boot forward slash config.txt if you're not used to the terminal normally the easiest way to make sure you're typing the right path in is if you start typing and then you press the tab button it will auto fill out for you so, so then you know you've got the right path and you know you're in the right folder so you can do that right from the start which is what I normally do so forward slash bo completes with boot and you do config tab config.txt so you press enter now this is the, the nano text editor so there's one row we want to uncomment out which is this one DTE param SPI on so to uncomment you just take out the, the hash or the pound symbol however you want to call it and then there's just a few rows we want to add down the bottom as well so again I'm just going to copy these over but I'll put them put them in the description, make it easier for people. Um, which is just, just enabling the Pi the Pi can hat so that it all works fine. So with that done, you to exit you press control and then you press X and then it's asks ask you if you want to save. To save just press the Y button. Confirms the name of the file to write to so we're just overwriting the old one. Press enter and then that's done. So if we do a sudo reboot, so the Pi is just booted back up. Um, so the ne next step we need to do is to bring up the um, CAN interface. So to do this, we do sudo forward slash sbin forward slash ip and space. Then it's link space set CAN zero up type can bitrate 
now this is where, where yours might change so I do most of my um, can work on the medium speed can bus in the car so that's 125k if you if you want to talk to like the the engine side that's the high speed can which is 500k so we'll stick to 125 so and you press enter and then that's it so so if I now type in IF config which some of you might know but that that kind of brings up your network interfaces so so your ethernet port and your wi-fi port we should now also have one for the CAN bus which is up here and you see CAN0 and it's got all the stats for it so at the moment we haven't brought it up we haven't logged any messages so so that's all that's going to show but this is now ready to go so to test it I've got a little test rig here that that will get up and we'll test it on but if you was doing this in your car you'd now you'd now plug plug your Pi can into your CAN bus um, I do this with a an OBD adapter and then I just solder the cables onto the right pins for even the medium speed or the high speed CAN bus alright so you should be able to see the uh, the test rig that I've got down here um, it's just the control panel out of a Jaguar um, power supply to power it and we've got a breadboard here um, mimicking the CAN bus so we've got the resistors at the two ends of the track and we've got the positive and the, the negative side of the CAN bus so the Pi is wired into it the control panel is also wired into it so first thing to do we'll just do a CAN dump just so we can double check that we're receiving the messages that we should be so in the terminal literally just type CAN dump all one word and then you do CAN zero and then you press enter so now it's dumping all the messages at the moment the panel's gone to sleep because if the panel doesn't receive any messages for a, a certain amount of time that itself goes to sleep so if we power it on it's on wide at the moment. there you go and now we see, see all those messages coming in they've stopped again now because it's received no messages so if I just press the power again you can see them all coming on you see various values changing in, in separate bits so these are hex bytes um, you can you can see different values this is the CAN ID so it's broadcasting on two IDs um, 2C8 and 50F each time it's a length of 8 bytes and then these are the messages that come through so something a lot of people don't really get when they first start working with CAN buses they, they think it works in the same way that the switch does so when you press a button then it sends a message it doesn't you can see the speed that it sends the messages at constantly and all of these messages on 2C8 are exactly the same so they're all just 0000 7F 7F if we push some buttons while it's sending a message we are getting values changing there but it's, it's pretty quick it's pretty hard to see and this is just one module so when you first plug into your car you think some of them have got you know up to a hundred modules I think on the later cars each each of them broadcasting at that speed on their own IDs so so can dump isn't too useful to look at live um, it's mainly good for creating logs and then going back afterwards you can even create logs and then replay them onto the CAN bus so if you add a big test rig think every module in your car or you know a select some you could log your car when you first power it on and then you can go back to your test rig replay that log file and then all of the the messages will get sent and the, the module should act how they would in the car so if we wanted to try and decode one of these buttons we could probably do it with can dump because because we've only got one module on there but we'll do it as though we've got more modules so to do that instead of can dump you use something called can sniffer so it's pretty similar again you just type in can sniffer space can zero so now we're sniffing on the can bus um, if we turn it on you'll see some messages pop up and we've got some timestamps here so what can sniffer does is it filters all the messages that are the same and it only shows you when a message changes the benefit of that is you, you saw on the can dump how many messages were exactly the same it, it filters all that noise out and it only shows you the ones that are changing 
it's just one line per ID as well which makes it a lot more useful so let's say we're going to try and find out what the skip back button is on this panel so if we power it on and then keep pressing the skip back button on and off on and off on and off panel's gone to sleep turn it back on on and off on and off on and off we can see this byte here is the one that's changing so we power it back on this one here you see it's changing to 40 when you turn it on so we now know 2c8 by bring it back up by 0 1 2 3 4 so byte 4 on ID 2c8 is the skip back button to try some more just to sort of see how they lay out so skip forward is same byte again but it's with a value of 10 so this is a the hex value of 10 um, to convert that you'd use a, a calculator I, th I think the pi is online you'd convert that to, to get your decimal number and it's, it's almost always rounded to to a full byte value so if we go hex to decimal So let's convert the hex value of 40. It's 64, you know, which is a, a round binary number. Same with 10. 10 will be 16. So uh, with panels like this, you're not likely to have two buttons pressed at the same time. But if you did, you, you would have the value of them both so all your operations or when you're looking at the data coming back you need to look at it in a bitwise format and this is an analog value of like a um, you know the temperature in your car you need to look at it in a bitwise format so we'll just do a couple more while we're here we'll go temperature up you see that one there temperature down it's as straightforward as that. There's obviously a lot more you know, noise when you when you're doing it in the car, but you, there are some tools that we can use to filter out. And there's a lot more modules. Um, we'll go through them. I'll, I'll do another video of doing it live in the car, and, and we'll, we'll go through those. But for now, that's that's the basics of it. And um, there's a few other tools that we can use. So if we want to get out of can sniffer, we, we control C. You can do a can send, um, and then you, you fill out your your message, and then that will send that message onto the can bus. Uh, so can dump we've covered, can sniffer we've covered. That's pretty much all you need to really really get started with it. Um, so yeah, I'll leave it at that, and then I'll do another video in the car. I think I've got a parking module turning up today, and I've I've got a parking sensor laying around. So. So I want to decode those and get them added to the, the Jaguar app that I've been making, sort of a visual parking representation. So if they turn up anytime soon, I'll do a video on those and go through how I get the values out and then maybe even go into how I display those values on, a, on an Express app, um, similar to a website.